Let's take a look at how you can create forms and handle data mutations with the Next.js app router and server actions. Before we get started, let's see what we'll build. So I have a pretty simple form where I can, of course, add some items and delete them as well. And while it's simple, we'll talk about some of the common patterns you'll need, like loading states and error states, and also making your forms progressively enhanced. But first, before we get into the app router, let's talk about how you might have been building forms today. So on the left in my editor here, I have an example of a form in the pages router. Now you'll notice we have the familiar form tag, an event handler for on submit, an input, and then some button. And you click to submit this form. It's going to call your event handler and we have to call a separate API route. So traditionally you would create an API route in your application. You would talk to the server securely inside of that API route since this code and this event handler would run in the browser and then you could get the response back and do something with it. This is how it's worked in the pages router since Next.js was originally created, but today we're gonna to talk about how to handle things a bit differently with the app router. So I went ahead and created a new Next application to get started using create next app. You can do npx create next app at latest dash e for an example, and then next forms, which is the name of this specific one to get all the code that I'm showing today. So we have a basic root layout here and then the entry point into our application, which is the page file that marks the entry route. Now inside of this file, this is a server component in the app router and it's asynchronous. So we can fetch data directly to display the to-dos on the page. So it's marked as async. We grab the to-dos back from really anywhere. In this case, we're using for cell Postgres, but could be any service or any promise. And we take those to-dos and we map over them inside of a list. And then we also add a form for adding a to-do. So some basic scaffolding here to get our application ready. Let's take a look at adding a to-do. Okay, so let's look at the add form component. Now there's some things in here that might look familiar and also some new things. So starting on line 25, we have the form tag, but you'll notice instead of using an event handler like on submit, we have the action prop. Now, for those who are familiar with HTML, this might look familiar. The action prop is used for processing a form and in traditional applications, that action is some URL that it sends the form data to. Now, this is great because it allows you to really easily send over your data and it works if you have JavaScript disabled. But what if you wanna have more than one form on a page? What if you want 10 forms on a page? Well, the cool thing about server actions is it's gonna make this really easy to do, plus some other benefits that we're gonna get into. So this action is actually just calling a function that runs on the server, which means there was no separate API that we had to set up. There was no API route or no route handler. We just call functions. We of course have an input as well, a submit button, and then also a live area that we're gonna talk about a bit later around accessibility. So we have this form action that takes in a server action called create to do, and then it also has some initial state. This initial state is just a message uh, that we want to return from our server action, whether it was successful or it failed. But let's jump into this specific create to do. So this file contains all of the server actions for our applications denoted by the use server directive at the top of the file. That means that everything in this file runs securely on the server and does not get sent to the client. So specifically, we have our create to do server action that takes in the previous state from our use form state. We'll get to that in a second and then also the form data. Now let me step through each part of the server action, how it's happening, and then I'll show an example of how it works. So first we have the form data. We're using Zod to validate the data that we're getting back is correct. So we're expecting a string and we're expecting it to be there. You could use whatever library you want here, but this is just an example showing how we're parsing that schema and then getting the data back. Then inside of a try catch, we call for cell Postgres or we call our Postgres database to insert this new value into our to-dos table. Then we revalidate the data. So this is going to go to the index of our application. It's gonna look at the data that's been cached when we fetched it back from the server. It's gonna say, you know what? We just did a data mutation. So revalidate all of the data on that path. And then it's gonna return back a message saying that it successfully added uh, to-do. Okay, so what does this look like? Well, let me go over to the browser on the right and I'll add a new to-do that says new to-do hit enter to submit my form and we can see it was successfully added here. And this works whether we have JavaScript enabled or disabled, which can show how progressive enhancement works. So let me just disable JavaScript here and I can say uh, another one <laughs> and add it. And we can see that this works as expected here. Let me just re-enable this. 
And this works for adding or deleting to-dos as well too. Now you might've noticed that when we submitted the to-do, it put the add button or the submit button into a loading state as we can see here. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So back in our add form, we have this submit button component and it's pretty simple. It reads from a new React hook called use form status. It uses the pending Boolean to determine whether it should put this button into a disable visual state. And that's really all it takes. Now it's important to denote that there's been a couple hooks that we've been using, use form status and use form state that are coming from React. These are new hooks that are in React Canary, which is a channel that's made available for frameworks to adopt and put the latest React features out into the world that will then come to a stable general purpose React channel for the rest of other standalone React users. So I'll include a link down in the description if you want to check out how to use these hooks in standalone React on the Canary channel as well too. It's a pretty similar story for deleting to-dos as well too. So if I go back to my page, I iterate over the to-dos and then I have a delete form for each of the individual to-dos that has the ID in the text. So if I click in here, again, it looks pretty similar. We're using form state to take in both the action that we want as well as the initial state. Again, this is just some message for either an error state or a success state. We have some hidden values in our form that allow us to pass additional data to the form data for our server action. We have a delete button that looks very similar to before. And then we have our live area as well too. So what does this look like? Well, I'll say another one, I'll add it, and I can click delete. Now, as I mentioned before, this allows us to have n number of forms on our page. We can have a bunch of different forms. And critically, one really cool thing that Next.js and Server Actions provide here is the data that can be returned from the Server Actions can not only update the cache data, it can also provide the new UI in one network round trip. That's pretty cool. The Next.js app writer architecture considers all of these individual pieces like fetching, caching, and revalidating data and integrates them all together. So for example, when we're deleting a to-do, just like in creating, we're able to call revalidate path to update that cache data. And as you see here, we click delete, it makes a network request. But then in that network request, in that round trip, we're able to say, you know what? We made a mutation on our data and we have some new UI to show by updating what values were cached. Now you might be thinking, that's great, but what if I need more fine grain control over revalidating the data in my application, more than just an entire path? Well, you can also use revalidate tag for specific data that you've tagged with the cache tag. And then if you're not using the fetch API, we are soon releasing a stable version of a way to tag any data as a function through cache that you can both set revalidation times as well as cache tags on. So stay tuned for that as well. Let's also talk about accessibility. So a couple things I wanna point out in this application. One, inside of this form, we've ensured that our inputs are correctly labeled for screen readers. Two, we have this live area that announces changes in our application. So I have voiceover on right now on Mac. Let's say I wanna add a new task here. A, that, that, O, hello. And I hit currently on the text field to enter your text in a seal tongue. And I hit enter. And then tell him hello. And we see that it says that I added this to do hello. Now that's being read out in the live area here. That's politely not interrupting my screen reader if something more urgent came in and it's not being shown. So I've added a little CSS here. So it's only for screen readers. And you'll notice that, let me just close this for a second. Uh -huh. If I go back to my action, the value that is returned from the server action that is used by use form state is what is put into that live area that's announced. So either we've successfully added a to-do in the create case or in the delete case, or we've failed to create or delete a to-do. So to quickly show what this would look like in an error state, what I've done is just put a delay of two seconds, and then I've early returned to show that there was an error state. I could also throw an error here as well too. So let me just type in test. P. I'll hit submit. You are currently on the test. Fail to create tunnel. And we see that it says failed to create to do, which is return from our server action. If there was some issue saving to your database, for example. One other small accessibility bit here is that we're using the ARIA disabled attribute on our button rather than disabled because for some screen readers that will actually hide the button if disabled is true. So this is a little bit better for the use case of this example.
Now there's a whole bunch more that we can do with forms in Next.js and with server actions in React. We can read cookies, we can set cookies, we can look at headers, we can handle optimistic UI, we can redirect. There's a bunch of stuff, but for the sake of the video today, we'll keep it just to some of the basics. The docs for this are live on nextjs.org, as well as this example, which I'll link in the description as well too. Let me know if you wanna see more videos like this and stay tuned for the next one. Peace.